This video is about biotechnology and glowfish. Glowfish are genetically modified fluorescent fish. They are commercially available around the world in many different colors as pets. These fish were first bred more than 10 years ago by Dr. Ji Yuan Gong and his colleagues at the National University of Singapore. They worked with a gene that encoded for the production of green fluorescent protein, or GFP. This gene was originally extracted from a jellyfish that naturally produced bright green fluorescence. In order to make the fish glow, they inserted a, the gene that codes for GFP into the embryo of a zebra fish. When the cells divided, every cell had this gene in their genome. When the full fish was formed, the fish was able to create GFP in every cell resulting in a glowing fish. The first step that the scientists had to go through to make glowing fish was to actually cut out the section of the DNA from jellyfish that coded for production of GFP. Now to do this they used a restriction enzyme. The restriction enzyme cuts out the section of DNA and the section of DNA has palindromic ends meaning that it reads the same from 3' prime to 5' prime end on both strands. Once this section is cut out, it makes sticky ends. These sticky ends will allow it to, to bond with the section of DNA from the fish when you try to insert it into the zebra fish's embryo. They used a virus to insert the DNA into the embryo of a zebra fish. In the virus, the gene that codes for viral coat protein was replaced with the gene that codes for green fluorescent protein. This way, when the virus DNA was injected into the cell, it didn't harm the cell, but caused it to synthesize GFP. Now, the cell's DNA would contain the gene that codes for green fluorescent protein. Once this DNA is inserted into the cell's DNA, transcription and translation can take over. First, helicase unwinds the DNA double helix into two separate strands, the sense and the antisense strand. Next, RNA polymerase transcribes the antisense strand into mRNA. This mRNA then leaves the nucleus and goes to the ribosome. At the ribosome, the mRNA code is read at one codon at a time. Based on these codons, the correct tRNA goes to the ribosome and brings an amino acid. These amino acids are then connected by peptide bonds and they form a polypeptide chain. This polypeptide chain then coils into a protein. If the green fluorescent protein gene were inserted into the DNA, the protein made would then be GFP, which would produce a glowing fish. In the P-Glow lab, we got bacteria to take up a plasmid with the GFP gene on it. This gene was controlled by an operon that was activated by arabinose sugar. So, in the presence of arabinose sugar, the bacteria would produce GFP. When the bacteria were incubated on a plate of agar with arabinose, they were able to produce GFP and glow green under UV light. This process in the Pigo lab is different from what happens with glowfish. This is because the bacteria in the Pigo lab are prokaryotic cells, while the glowfish cells are eukaryotic. For eukaryotic cells, a virus is needed to inject the DNA into the cell, while for prokaryotic cells, we can simply use a heat shock to get the cell to take up the DNA plasmid. The two processes are different because eukaryotes and prokaryotes have different structures. Eukaryotic cells have a nucleus, while prokaryotic cells have their DNA floating in the cytoplasm. This DNA technology can be used in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic organisms. The end results are similar, but they require different steps to achieve them. Our project focused on the difference between eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. The processes to make glowfish and the Piglo lab were compared and the differences were noted. Biotechnology can use, be used to do many things in the world, involving many types of organisms and many traits.
In our project, it was a small example to make fish glow for as pets, but much bigger things can be accomplished with this biotechnology.